Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's major markets update for Wednesday, the 23rd of March. Is a fourth wave pullback underway? As we know from Elliott Wave, after three comes four, and after four comes five. So, so far, nothing out of the ordinary. As I already said yesterday in the last bullet of my summary slide, I'm still tracking a wave three, four, five of one, etc. So no real surprises. I'm pretty sure uh, most people are already uh, freaking out uh, because we have had a down day after pretty much a 400, 400 points rally in the S&P 500, over 10% rally, a little bit of a pullback. It's not out of the ordinary, uh, but we're not going to be complacent. And we know that three waves can also be A, B, C. That's why we keep the ABC on the charts. It's not my preferred view because of all the strong breath that we've been seeing. So let's have a look at the charts. But before that, again, no update on Friday. I'll be flying out tomorrow. Um, so we'll be back on Monday again. I hope you, by the way, enjoyed yesterday's um, extra update. So you still get three for this week. Let's move on to the Dow Jones first and foremost. So far, it looks like we have one A. 2B, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 of 3C. So it honestly almost suggests we still need a green 5 to go. Normally, if we look here at the ideal wave count, wave 3 of 3, okay, wave 3 of 3, I know the, the nomenclature is reverse. I have it as a, a Arabic 3 and a Roman numeral 3 here because we're in a different wave degree. But wave 3 of 3, is ideally topping at around 123.6 or 100 percent okay of wave one measured from the wave two low what do we get on the dow jones 123.6 then wave four should drop to about this target zone here potentially as low as in this case about 34,000. that is to the this extension box okay so we can drop this low here even okay it's not out of the ordinary i have it drawn here but we can even go a little bit lower for this wave four without any problems. This is the whole wave four box. Okay, so nothing out of the ordinary yet. If we start dropping below the 62% extension, uh, then uh, we might have to consider that this is just a bear market rally. And then we only had three waves higher. Yes, it remains possible. It's not my preferred view, but I've been proven wrong many times. So um, we'll keep it as is. But please remember, we're so far still doing a pretty perfect ideal wave, uh, impulse wave higher. Three of three at 123.6. Uh, then we should see about four of three at the 76.4. Um, I don't even think we're going to get that low, but that is at around 34,000. And then we're going to move higher to ideally this target box, etc. So we'll have to see how this is exactly going to fill in. And on a shorter term uh, time frame here as well, we have one, two, one, two, and here one, two, three, four, three, four. So far, right here in this way for target box, if we get a reversal, we should move higher. Market is already getting quite oversold. So that's a good sign that the downside should soon be completed. Now, remember, in this case, wave two slash B took several days. Um, the micro four in orange took only a few hours. OK, I still like the fact that this continues to look like impulses higher. One, two, three, four, five. OK, I can even draw that in for you here. It continues to look like five waves to the upside. There, that's the first one. And then this one is two, three, uh, four, there. And that's then, of course, five. And we're going to do the same here. This looks pretty good for a wave one, a wave. Two, a wave three, and a wave four. And then again, we can see here a wave one, 
a wave, two, a wave, three, and a wave, four, and that of course is then a wave, five, there, of of course, five, there, so far so good, still looks pretty nice like an impulse, nothing out of the ordinary yet, so the hourly chart fits pretty well with the daily chart, I like it. Moving on to the NASDAQ, a lot of lines here. I know this is quite confusing, but let's focus on the forest and not the trees. So we have this ideal wave four target zone uh, low here on March 14th, and then we've been impulsing higher. We had the Federal Reserve drop, and since then we've been rallying quite nicely. And this would then be wave one, and this is wave two. As you know, March 14th, we went marginally below the February 24th low. So this cannot be a one and this cannot be a two, but this is way five or four, in my opinion, of C, of course, five of C or four. One, two, and we should now be impulsing higher, another one, two, and another one, two. Then the recent pullback here uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, it's three, four, day before yesterday. Then we rallied again in an impulse higher. Now let's focus on the gray, the minute Fibonacci levels. Okay, the minute Fibonacci levels. Wave three should top here between 14,587 and 14,714. That's what we got exactly yesterday. That is very close as well to the 138.2% extension. Okay, so that is quite a classic wave three of three target. Then wave four of three should drop to this target zone here. Okay, anywhere between 14,256 and 14,383 which is very close to the 100% extension in green, which is the one, two, uh, three, four, five uh, pattern we're tracking. Then we have a drop this morning. We had the rally this morning, the dip got bought. And then this one looks like a C wave, A, B, C. The ideal target zone of wave C has already been reached and we can drop a little bit lower. This is 100 to 261.8% extension of wave A measured from wave B, right here in the ideal wave four target zone. If we reach it, then we have a good chance to move here to the 200, 276.4% extension, which is right here at the green 161.8. So five of three, ideal target zone of five of three in gray, reaches nicely the ideal target zone of wave three. I like it. So warning sign is below 14,178. We drop below 14,178, odds start to increase. This is not an impulse and indeed, Correction might continue, okay? It really can. We have negative divergence here. What I like is how um, the RSI 5 has been um, playing out this time around compared to the whole previous decline. Much longer overbought than we've seen for a while. We've had some overbought conditions, but mostly oversold. Oversold, oversold. Now we're mostly overbought. So this looks um, much better, I would say from the impulse perspective. So I'm tracking this nicely. This suggests we get the five to four and the five to go with the ideal target of around 15,000. That should then be wave one of five, two of five and three, four and five of five yet to come. So here's the S&P 500 where we have two options available that either wave two be topped, uh, bottomed here on March 8th or we bottomed here on March 14th. Jury is still out there. Uh, it's a little bit potato potato because we're kind of looking at uh, almost identical upside targets anyway because of the slight marginal difference here of only a few dollars so the end result is quite the same looks like a one a two one two three four three four so right now we're moving towards this ideal c wave of wave four target zone this was already i think forecasted yesterday so nothing out of the ordinary yet looks like we have a nice um, impulse higher one two three four five three four i like it again this will have to drop below i would say 4365 ish somewhere around there to suggest this is um, not going to be an impulse anymore alternatively we have the wave 2b down here in the march 14th low one two three four okay Again, seems like we still need a wave five. We topped here right in the ideal wave three of three target zone here in gray. Should now move higher. Uh, also here, if we go below 43.65, 
odds do not favor continued upside. Okay, so also this one has the same levels to watch. We're getting close here for this wave four, wave five, four, five. This one is a little bit low. I might have to move it up a little bit, but it's fine. And then ultimately again to about 46, uh, 45, 47, 10 for wave five. That's still the preferred path. At this moment, should not drop below 4365. Same path here, should not drop below 4365. If we zoom out, we see the same here. Um, I was still a little bit uncertain if uh, Monday's uh, drop was 3.4 or not. It appears that it was not, that the current drop is 3.4. You can see here still nice Fibonacci ping pong, so to say. Um, she no sell signals or anything, so so far looks okay for the impulse. And we have our levels to watch, 43.65. We drop below it. I have to reconsider that this was indeed only a bounce. But that remains on the charts. Nothing has changed. 1A, 2B, 3C. That has not changed. Until we see five waves up in green, that remains on the table. So that option always remains on the table. And we can now set relatively clear parameters saying, you know, below 4365, I don't trust that uh, bigger impulse anymore. It would not fit with a lot of other um, data I'm seeing out there with all the breath uh, surges and stuff, but price is the final arbiter. So we'll know soon enough. So that was that one. Uh, then we're going to look at, um, you know, what are the other people seeing? Always good to shop around. This is, again, from EliotWaveTrader.net. Always good. Um, let's see here. They were looking for a top at about 45.22 and then a pullback also here to about 43, uh, 60, 45, 44, 50, 44, 5, 7. Fits nicely. I like it, fits very well uh, with what I'm looking here at, for as well, right? Again, shouldn't drop too low. So somewhere around there, 43.65 should hold. That is the support zone, 43, they have it here at 43.60. All right, a little bit plus or minus, it's fine. So, so far so good, looks quite nicely like a, uh, impulse pattern, nothing out of the ordinary. Lastly, um, here's a tweet by Andrew Thrasher. Um, can highly recommend following him. He, he always says good stuff. He found that more than 95% of the NASDAQ 100 stocks have regained above their 20-day moving average, while less than 45% of the stocks are above the 200-day moving average. Apparently, this is just the fourth time we have such a short-term breath surge. Um, while long-term breath, right, 20-day versus 200-day moving average is still kind of weak. So when did this happen? Going all the way back to the 1990s, 2009 low, 2018 low, 2020 low. Again, we have another line of evidence pointing towards uh, an important low being struck and that we are simply filling in the first couple of waves of this larger impulse higher. I see no reason to change that tune unless we start breaking down. Very simple. Price will tell us. Uh, all the breath surges be damned, so to say. Price will tell us. So that's what we're looking for. Dow Jones as well. I don't want to see it drop below, what did I say, 33,000. Um, I would say 500. That would be too much. Um, NASDAQ 100 should hold here above about 14,000. Um, I would say 125-ish, we should really hold above it. And the S&P 500 should hold above about 43.65 plus or minus five, right? Depends a little bit on how accurate your work is, but you can see here 43.65 plus or minus five should hold above it. Then we can still fill in this nice impulse higher. So that's what we're tracking. If not, then it's an ABC, unfortunately, and then we'll have to reconsider. Uh, our options, once again, even an ABC, by the way, can still be part of a ending diagonal. Um, as I showed you for the IWM, by the way. Okay, so there's always a plethora of options available. Um, I don't really like um, diagonal, so to say, but again, this could be A, B, C, something like this. Okay, so please keep that in mind. We can do some sort of diagonal. The market doesn't have to do a standard impulse higher. So we'll simply track this uh, once again. Again, so this could even be way four. That's why we keep the alternative A, B, C, one question mark, two question mark, right? We keep it. And then that way four can become very complex, A, B, C, 
and then another low, boy, it would be a setup, unbelievable. I have not seen it in a long time. But for now, I'm keeping an eye on the impulse on the other indexes till proven otherwise, which will be the breaks below those critical levels. And of course, conversely, a break above yesterday's highs means that the impulse continues higher. That said, if you're new to Elliott Wave, please go to my website, read about it, uh, lots of good stuff. Don't forget to look at the how-to videos on how to track corrections. I can tailor-made trading systems for you if you don't know what you want to do. Um, or you can do my trading alert service. We already cashed in on, uh, or at least my system, on a, uh, I think, profitable SPXL and UDAO trade, and maybe some other ones as well. Just, I think, at the close, they probably got stopped out in the last little bits. Is, so that's always good. Um, the trading system doesn't care what the wave count is. It just cares about um, cashing in profits, all right? That's all we want to do and minimize the losses. So again, I wish I could give you exact answer that this is the wave three of three. Uh, we don't know yet. So we're going to watch the price levels and the market will tell us. Like I said yesterday, I continue to prefer to look higher to complete waves three, four, five of one, et cetera. So that still remains on track. Now we have to see if we're uh, in, still within this green wave three or if we have only completed three waves up, which is a A, B, C. So that is again, the objective fact-based good other wave, right? We're not gonna fit the market to our opinion. We're gonna fit our opinion um, to the market. And we've had that A, 1A, 2B, 3C, and eventually the market will tell us if it's gonna be A, B, C or three, four, and five. Now I prefer the three, four, and five based on this whole plethora of evidence that I've showed you. Uh, but if the market decides to do something else, we're ready. We got it on the table. Then we know exactly what's going to happen. And then we just do the whole rinse, let it repeat once all over again and start from scratch. Very simple. Uh, no no uh, surprises from that end. We are ready. We got all our options ready. Okay. Remember though, market breath uh, kept soaring uh, all the way through yesterday. Um, I don't know the market breath readings for today yet, but if there's no negative readings, um, then the bull bears have nothing because they need more stocks to decline uh, than their advancing stocks. If that may see a pullback with a lot of advancing stocks still, then it is just a pullback. All right, with that, thank you so much for listening. I'll be back on Monday. If you have any questions, please email me and um, I'll gladly answer uh, as soon as I can. Take care, trade safe, and never forget to have stops in place um, or you might lose uh, all your money, and that's not what we want. Have a great rest of your day. See you on Monday. Bye.